Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. And more importantly, for this one episode <laughs> only, Haley. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, Dan. This is not a rerun. This is not something from this the past. This is real. This it's is happening real. now. Yeah. The you know, it's really exciting. Haley's back. I'm sure this feeling will wear off. <laughs> uh, probably pretty soon, but at least for now, it's You're really excited. fun. Yeah, it's yeah. really fun Good. to have you back. <laughs> Dan did a great job. Dan Altina filled in, and you know that was all good. But it feels good to be back to normal. Yeah. So, we've got a lot Nothing of things. Nothing feels normal to me anymore. <laughs> no, that doesn't matter. It's about me, Haley, and I feel better. So that's really what I wanted to to Drill focus it. on. That's yeah. what I'm really focused on. Period. So on the show today, we've got a lot of different things. You've you've learned a lot over the summer. So much. I'm like a different person now. Yep, she's entirely a different person. She's not near as abrasive or as grating <laughs> on the personality because, man, you know, I we can be honest here. You are a grating personality, but you're better. You're softer. You're gentler. Oh my gosh. I'm joking. I haven't been able to to no, really unleash. Yeah, you've been so. You're pretty pent up, so. <laughs> Got a lot of yeah. venting to do. <laughs> no, anyway, you had a lot of things happen, and we're going to talk about some of that, I'm sure, in this opening segment, too. But we'll be talking about some steps to getting an estimate for a new roof. Yeah. And it sounds like like so many preliminary steps. We're talking about steps to getting just an estimate for a new roof. So but it's many, so important. You found that out. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good stuff here. We're going to talk about that. And then after that, who knows? I don't know what we're going to have time for after that, but we'll find out. I'm sure it will be utterly brilliant of and amazing. Course. So right now, though, let's just welcome you back. I've already unleashed a torrent of, well, some some positives, Are you negatives. Feeling, feeling better now? Oh, not even a little bit. Okay. I've got a lot left <laughs> in the tank. But let's talk about it. How'd it go? I mean, you you had a baby. I had when a was baby. Wally Wallace born? Five fifteen. In the morning? No. In the afternoon? The day. The day. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of us would say May 15. That's okay. But I like the number. Like he chose oh. a good date and okay. I appreciate that. I went into labor on Mother's Day, which was a really cool present. Like I don't, I mean, having the baby on Mother's Day would maybe be the next best present, but like this was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. See, I think, I think this is the best because when Mother's Day comes, True. you're going to want that to be your day. Yeah. Then you're going to have this resentment. Now it's his birthday. Jeez. Yeah, good grief. <laughs> it's about me, not about him. No, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So the next day is his birthday. And yeah. So I, the name, Wallace? Yeah, Wallace What David do you call Johnson. Wallace? I go back and forth okay. like really frequently. It's either Wally or Wallace. Not when he's in trouble or anything, just like normal. I just Has go he back been and in forth. trouble already? <laughs> no. He's I mean, a baby. If what he can he can't do wrong? choose to do wrong, I don't think you can yell at him. I don't think that's morally <laughs> acceptable. So you haven't yelled at him yet. No. No, you'll give me you'll send texts periodically. I was pretty good. I left you alone, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't hound you or or be obnoxious. No, I was surprised because t- Whoa, whoa. What? See, I'm a very thoughtful <laughs> con- you should not be surprised. This should be exactly what you expected. <laughs> Kindness and consideration from me. Well, but it is all about you. It is, isn't so. it? Yeah, I had a lot of texts I deleted. No, but you would send texts back, and sometimes it was Wally did this, and then it's Wallace, and I had no idea how to refer Just to him I'm anymore. Feeling. What's that? Okay, Just, so it's how yeah. you're feeling. So how we can you're call feeling? Him whatever you whatever know, we want. Whatever you want. All right. We call him Wall. We call him Wall Dog. Call him <laughs> Wall Dog. I Walrus. Like call him Kawali Bear. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. He's, he's narwhal. love that in high school. He's got all these onesies, you know, and there was a walrus on one one day. I was like, oh, my gosh, walrus. You're walrus. Uh, <laughs> and then there was a narwhal on another one. That's even better. Narwhal's even better. And then there was a koala bear one day, and I thought, koala bear. Like, that's my favorite. Yeah, he'll love that in high school. <laughs> yeah, what was your nickname? Koala bear. <laughs> oh. It's so cute. I yeah. love it. He'll grow out of that. But I was always Danny. That was not near as cool, but it was still silly. And I've got a couple people that still call me that. It feels very strange. So when he's 50 years old and somebody's calling him Koali, that'll be funny. Anyway, Can't so wait. all of that's going well. How's the whole process? I mean, becoming parents, all of that. What's that feel like? Um, It's weird. I mean, because yeah. it should feel like, I mean, it's overwhelming, right? But yeah, you've at got the somebody same responsible time, for now. 
it kind of feels like he's always been here in a way. Like, okay. if that makes sense. Nope, not a, not even a little. No. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I just, it just feels like he's always been here. I, don't I know think how what to that means it. is it's right. Yeah. It just feels perfectly yeah. right. The family is exactly. now it's the it's at least the start yes. of what it should be. Yeah. You and Jordan. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, it was okay. You know, but Burger, there's no buffer. You know, now there's a he buffer. Did a little for us. Burger's the cat. The cat yeah. yeah, we got to be specific. Yes, people are going to wonder about Burger, that weird child named cat. Burger that never gets referenced. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Burger the cat. I, yeah, I don't. I want to know how how's Burger doing with with the whole transition. He's done better than I expected. I mean, he's used to being an only child. Right. Mm -hmm. So he gets all of the attention normally. You know, he's not like a normal cat where they're a little cold. He's Mm -hmm. more dog like in that way where we come home and it's about him. (laughs) And now it's not that way. You know, we're just focused on the baby. So I kind of thought he'd be a little resentful. Yeah. And cats, you know, even oh, yeah. now, like they could be mean towards the They baby. can go to the bathroom in your shoes. That's one of their favorites. Uh, on your bed. I mean, there's all kinds of, oh, there's ways lots of places that they you can retaliate. Go to the yeah. yeah. But no, he's been great, honestly. He seems to understand that Wallace is very important and he kind of keeps his distance a little bit. He'll come up and like sniff him every once in a while and then he quickly runs away. <laughs> Does he stink? Is that the problem? Probably to Burger. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. He's like, what does this baby smell? Yeah. Speaking of stinks, how about the diaper changing? How much fun has that been? It's been good. Oh, really? Good. I mean, he likes to pull pee pranks every so often. I don't understand. Um, Like, the diaper's open. Now we're going to pee. Oh. I call it a prank. Yeah. I really think that he thinks it's funny. Yeah. (laughs) When we got Caleb home, I remember we were talking about this. I remember we put him. None of my houses have ever had good lighting. Someday <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll be able to see in the house. But <laughs> put him in a corner. He had a little um, what do you call the little playpen thing? And the little got changing a little, table. I guess so. That that'll suffice. Sure. So he's on the changing table. There's a light behind us, and there's you know my wife's changing his pant or his diaper, and there's this spider web. I can see the shadow of it. This little thin spider web. <laughs> And I keep grabbing oh at it. Gosh. And finally, I realize I am soaked. What is going on? Damn. And yes, it was that. It was a pee prank, I think. Oh gosh, yep. Yeah. He goes through like phases. Like there's just days where like that is just what you should expect because he clearly is just thinks this is the best thing. But then there's like whole weeks where he doesn't do it at all. Huh. Yeah. Well, I hope that quits and <laughs> doesn't continue on into adulthood because it becomes less funny yeah. as the years pile up. Yeah. All right. So you got that all going. Everything's good in that regard. Jordan He's is just, having a ton of fun. Yeah. Honestly, like best dad. Wallace is the happiest baby. I mean, well, I we think can't we're all really be the best lucky. dad, Haley. And I've already locked that title. You've got down. that mug. He could be second best. Yeah, I've got the mug. I've got a plaque to go with it, and then a little trophy. A little trophy, sure. Yeah, with a yeah. dad throwing a kid at the air. Uh huh. Now, um, I, I don't know what I expected. I guess this. <laughs> so it's but way it's better like than the. A really easy transition in that way. Like, I don't. I feel very lucky. I guess. Yeah. And. I really do think that I just have the best baby as well. I think everyone Everybody probably does. feels that way, yeah. but he's just so happy. Like he's so quick to smile and laugh and Maybe you guys are just funny looking. That's possible. It's certainly possible. <laughs> Not necessarily technically likely, but really close to that. No, I'm so excited to like see what he turns into, you know, as time goes on. Yeah, wait till they do and then you'll wonder, hmm, can we chip that part off? Can we fix this? And you got to learn to reject. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, trust me. It's all about, you know, you see kids, they grow, they make good decisions, then they start making lousy ones. And you're trying to, uh-huh. how do I step in and help without being that parent? It's all fun, though. Yeah. But it's the best best thing I've ever, I don't know that it's the that I've done the best at it, but it's the favorite thing I've ever done. Is oh, kids. absolutely. Yeah. And we had it's twins, so much fun. Twins right off the bat. So I did not transition as smoothly. Oh, that's, I don't know if anyone does mm. in that situation. You Maybe know, some. I, I know. guess so. And I, I could have been way better. I was, I don't know. You were I, young too, though. Not as young as I wish I, you know, could say I was. <laughs> I should have been more mature than I was. 
I was a little bit selfish with my time. You know, they intruded into that. Well, and yeah, big time. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and I didn't transition very smoothly. And they scared me. They came very early. Right. So yeah. they were all Medically very delicate and yeah. very little. And I, oh, man, so scary. Once they got to the point, I always said, when I can knock them down, not on purpose, but. No, but yeah. And they can get back up and they're okay. And I don't worry about something. Sure. That's when it became super fun because now I didn't have to worry so much. And then I started, you know, as time goes by, I'm still learning to be less selfish with my time. I've gotten a lot better. But, yeah, it's an, in, an initial big jump, you know, to go from that. So it's really cool to hear that Jordan has made that jump yeah, amazingly really well. well. Although it turns out this morning he took your He your took lunch. my lunch. Yeah, so he's not Who entirely selfless. <laughs> Selfish people take somebody else's lunch out of the. I really, you know, I I think there's like just male brains sometimes. I think he whoa, saw the food whoa. and just assumed this is mine. Well, did you have your name on it? No. There you go. It probably was his. <laughs> he it. Anyway, we're gonna take a break right now. I want to come back and talk about some of the things that have unfolded. Yeah, because honestly, of your year. I feel like the baby is almost. The easiest, the easiest part. part. <laughs> yeah. So basically, everybody buckle up because if you like hard luck stories. Yeah, no kidding. Not necessarily with happy endings because I don't know that we've got an ending there yet. But In- if you like to hear other people's yeah. sorrows and woes, you're going to love what's coming next. That's all just ahead. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And you know what? Hmm. I don't even think I announced the show name or anything at the in the opening segment. You were segment. just so excited to talk to me. I was so excited because if you just tuned in, you're hearing Haley, and this is like current Haley. This isn't a past episode or a previously <laughs> recorded this is something. Haley. <laughs> yes, Haley is back from maternity leave. Yeah, it's about time. She took a lot of time for herself and her family. I took no time, babe. And if I were in another country, I would have gotten a year. Well, well, still, it left me stranded yes. for a while and Dan slightly was talking uncomfortable. Talking to himself all day long. Right. It's a real struggle for everyone. The kids are going to be so glad that you're back. Oh, I bet. Because I come <laughs> home after saying nothing all day long. Right, because what people don't understand is that it's we don't work in like a normal office environment where you have other people that you'll just talk to instead of me if I'm gone. Nope. That's not the situation. It's just us. Yeah, so it's <laughs> me and four walls and the computer screen and the I people who I should have gotten you like home. a little friend, or like a stuffed animal or something to talk to I had a to dead mouse gone. that I kept for a while, but then that started to go rank, so I had to get rid of that. <laughs> anyway, you're back. You had maternity leave. We talked yeah. about the baby, the transition, how you love all of that. Even changing diapers is fun. Let's talk about, you said at the end of the last segment yeah. that having the baby it's was honestly on, the easiest part of your whole it process. It feels like the easiest part. Because what has happened? You bought a house a year and a half ago-ish? Yeah. In September, it'll be two years. Okay. Um. So very soon, it'll have been two years. And I don't think anything can go wrong the first year after you buy a house. What I think mean? that's just like the rule. People always talk about that. Like, there's no point in having the one-year home warranty because nothing's going to go wrong that first year. So what if I would buy a new house every year? I would never have to deal with any kind of... Yeah, that's probably true. You could just be a gypsy. All right. Well, with a house. Yeah, but if you're moving that often, I mean... Well, sometimes, you know, legal issues make you want to have to move. <laughs> that's just a meta- metaphor for something <laughs> else. What anyway, is happening? Let, let's move away from that <laughs> potentially damaging topic that's completely false... And talk about what happened. You know, you got past your first year of no problems. Oh you just move along, Haley. Move along. I'm so Act distracted. like you've seen any. You've seen nothing. All right. You get to the second year, and I think it made up for that first year. Yes, of because bliss. now it's everything. <laughs> you have had, yeah. Literally, it feels like everything go wrong. Yeah, it just feels like once a week there's something new. So um, what? What started it off? Let's what's see. going on? What started it? The start was I noticed the plaster. On the ceiling in Wallace's bedroom. Of course, it was the baby's bedroom. Sure. Of course. (laughs) Starts to get a little wrinkly. And I touch it. It's hard. So I think, has this always been here? Like, I don't know if I noticed it, but maybe it's been like this. It didn't, you know, it wasn't soggy or anything. And so I kind of let it go. And then, you know, it it starts to look a little worse. So I'm thinking, okay, this is fresh. There's Mm -hmm. clearly water damage. Great. 
this roof has got to go. I knew that it was going to happen very quickly. Um, the inspector said, you know, three to five years. No. <laughs> oh, it didn't even make it that first didn't year. Didn't make it. I did the first year. Yeah, but not the first the year, one. not the second. Um, so, yeah, that was the start of it. And now there's water damage in another spot. So it's just continued in a very short period of time. It's gotten really bad. Um, then let's see. Jordan got poison ivy. We found out that we have tons of poison ivy in your landscaping. In my landscaping, like in the beautiful ground cover that we have surrounding the home, there's poison ivy just sprinkled in. And, and maybe it's what's making it beautiful. <laughs> no, it's you not. Just don't because I spend asked Jordan it. to pull it because I thought it was weeds. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So you can imagine. So you what asked happened. him to do this. Yeah. You sent him to this task of death and And despair. I was gonna do it myself and thank God I didn't. <laughs> because I can't imagine being a new mom and having poison ivy everywhere at the same time. That sounds no. terrible. Or getting it on the baby. Exactly. That's what I was so worried Jordan about. Jordan can sleep outside for all anybody cares, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> So then there's that. Um, then... You've got the, the paint. I want to quick talk about yeah. that. The the ceiling yes. in Wallace's, Kowalis's room. Yes, yeah, so we had to move him. You have him. potentially lead paint yes. underneath it all, right? Correct. So you've got that issue on top yeah. of things. When lead paint's encapsulated. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But when it starts to become exposed, mm-hmm. you, you start to get more concerned. So that's in the baby's room of all places. Yeah. So he had gets to moved move him out. out. Um, which was a whole thing. You know, we've got our system in there already. And so now we've got to completely uproot him. Now he's in a different room. And well, and you spent so much time getting the nursery yes, all beautiful. It was beautiful. so sad to see his room emptied out. It was just like, it's yeah. heartbreaking. I spent so much time and energy making it like a beautiful space for him. And then to have this happen where he's just like not even in the room at all is really sad. And then to know that you've got the roof yes. hanging over your head. <laughs> See what I did there? A little play yeah. on words. I was an English major. Those things are easy to me. Other people would struggle with stuff like that. I nail it. So you've got that going on. That makes it depressing. Yes. You've got Jordan just just covered in like gooey like, seriously hives and covered. Stuff. Covered. He's a mess. He had to go to the emergency room or the or urgent, urgent care. care. Or he got like a shot of whatever the steroids are, and then he was on steroids for like a week after that. So you got that going on, and then mice mice, mice showed up. Yep. Um, seemingly only two of them, which I'm thankful for that. We caught them, but yeah. Um, and then the plumbing. Yes, I do not know about this. I know about <laughs> knew about all those other things, but then last week Haley texted, well, you had an accident last oh, week. Oh, yeah. I was in a terrible accident. You came back for two days. Yep. And on your second day going home, I never even saw your company car. I know they got you a new company car. I saw it, but I never saw you in it. Yeah. And I never will. No. Because it's going done. home, you somebody pulled out in front of you and there was no stopping. Yeah. You know, I was on Byron Road, so I was going, you know, like forty five or fifty and just as I'm entering the intersection, someone pulls out. Yeah. So there's there's nothing I can do at no. that point. So total the car. Everybody was safe. Yeah, though, everyone's and fine. okay. That was the big thing. Yep. I'm okay. Concussion, and then you get but... home. I'm checking on you. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You text back, I'm okay. Do you have a plumber's name? We yep. don't har- hardly have any time left. But so now you got plumbing things too? I do. So if you've ever gone through the mill and you felt like, oh my gosh, what what else can happen? I don't have any good answers because, you know, you just got to deal with it. But, but it maybe happens to everybody. email me because I need someone <laughs> to like commiserate with. <laughs> well, what we're going to talk about right now, we're going to take a break. And the East Side listeners, you're going to get a Repco Light Rewind. Yeah. West Side listeners, you're going to get news and weather. When we all get back together, we're going to learn from some of the things that, that you're going through. You, you yeah. went through the whole At roof least estimation that. process. People can learn from my issues. We've got a lot of great info and that's all coming up next. Stick around. Well, Haley, we're welcoming you back. Uh, happy that you're back from your maternity leave. We've run you through all kinds of stuff. I complimented slash well, attacked you verbally. Yeah, it was, um, all in fun, right? <laughs> right? A confused entrance. Yes. So we've done a lot of things. I had a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. I saved up over the course of the three months or yeah. half a year that you seem to have been gone. And I just unloaded. I probably should have gotten earplugs before I came back. You should have. You should have done something to prepare prepare. for what was coming. We did all of that. Last segment, we talked about all the things that went wrong in your home over the break. (laughs) And right now on the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore, we're actually going to talk about roofs. 
So I don't think we have a lot of paint stuff in today's show, but Benjamin Moore is still happy to sponsor because they know they're going to help people get their roofs figured out. Well, and you know, I think roofs are... Roofs, roofs. Roofs, roofs. roofs. That's what dogs do. (laughs) I am going to quietly Google plural Um. of roof. (laughs) You just carry on. They can kind of be a paint topic because you've got to choose a color and it's got to work with your house color. And, you know, you got to sample things largely. It's a whole other segment. We could make a whole paint segment out of talking about roofs, but we're not okay. actually going to do that. Well, and, 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 and the whole idea is hiring contractors yes. and things like that. Things to know. That's roofs. True. Roofs is the plural of roof in all varieties of English. Roofs is an old secondary form. So oh. it appear that according to the Google... You are correct. More correct than you. Neither one of us are wrong. It's fun to live this in this zone. Neither one of us are wrong, but I was more right. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So you've got so to get a roof. So glad you Googled it. What's that? So glad that you Googled it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The Google is at my fingertips. I might as well look. So let's talk about this. You've got to go and get quotes. And it sounds like it might be something that's, hey, you just make a couple phone calls and you're good to go. You right. learned a ton of really interesting things. I really, yeah. And I, I think we're going to break this up into like some questions that... I've got like... My best advice. Right. And then follow up is going to be the questions you should be asking. I knew there were two parts. Could have just deferred to you, but I'm used to doing this job alone. So (laughs) it's a struggle. now. It's a struggle. I've got to slowly get some of the reins back. Yeah. 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 I've been running roughshod over everything. So let's talk about your best advice. Yeah. What do you got? I've got. You know, this roof, we talked about it earlier. I moved into the house a couple years ago. I was told that I had at least three years left Mm -hmm. with this roof. So I was really hoping to get that amount of time at least out of it. I was going to try to push five. Of course. But um, that was not the case. And the reason that I've got to replace it is because I've got a leak. There's plaster that's damaged. I've got, you know, multiple places now that have water damage. Like, it's got to go. Multiple places in the same room? No. Or different areas of the house? Yeah, different areas of the house. All of that is starting to come to... Your attention. Exactly. You got to get it fixed. And I think some people might have hoped that they would just be repairing the roof. Mm-hmm. And I think that can be okay sometimes. However, this is is an old roof. I knew that from the get go. And so I could have repaired it maybe just these couple spots. And then in a couple years, I'd have to replace the entire roof. I don't really want to have to go through that process. And I think that definitely when you're getting an estimate, even if you think it's for repair right off the bat, just get an estimate to get the entire roof done and get their best advice on that because sometimes it's really not worth waiting. So I'm looking at your notes and that's not, that's even, not even on there. there. So that's a freebie. That's a freebie. Everybody yep. got that freebie because Haley's back and she's just g- given out all kinds of free stuff. <laughs> Some of it is advice. So there goes your first little thing. Yes. What's the first one on your list? The first one on the list when you're looking for a roof estimate is research the process of getting your roof replaced before you even start calling. Honestly, I really, I think that so many people go into these estimates probably not having a lot of the jargon or like terms that Mm -hmm. they're throwing out here, like the decking of your roof or underlayment or, you know, even the types of specific nails that they're going to throw out there. It's nice to have some background knowledge when you're going into a conversation that's serious stuff. I mean, you're going to be spending a lot of money. So going into that with a little bit of background knowledge so that you can be a part of the conversation Mm -hmm. and not just be smiling and nodding the entire time because they're running with it, basically. I mean, everything they say is going to sound good to you if you don't know what they're talking about. Well, we joked at the beginning. I joked. uh, Haley laughed politely about the Google. (laughs) The Google was right at my fingertips. And... that plays out in this situation. You got the information out there. This isn't like exactly. It's this hill that's too big to climb or to figure out. Yeah. The information is right there. And even if you, you know, there's going to be some people that know it back and forth. And I get that. Right. I would put myself, I would have put myself previously in that boat. I've been concerned about roof, roofs, roofs. Now I'm all messed up. <laughs> that's always been a thing because I don't want to spend all of that money. I get worried yeah. about it. And I know enough, uh, some about it. I, I've been a part of replacing a roof on my previous house. So you kind of understand. And so I thought I kind of understood. I figured yeah. I probably don't need to look into that. But then when you started going through some of the other things and you mentioned the kinds of nails, the kinds of this and the kinds of that, I realized, okay, I didn't. I would never have even asked some of those questions because yeah. I never would have thought about that. Right. So even if you think you're okay, 
it doesn't hurt. I mean, what what does it take? Just well, a matter exactly. of a, take a number of articles. Minutes, right. Read through. Watch a YouTube video even. You know, if you don't want to read an article, just watch a video for 15 minutes. Watch someone do some of these things. They're going to be talking about what they're using, why they're using it. And already you've just got a little bit of an edge going into this conversation because you're going to also know the questions to ask them so that you get the best information out of that experience as well. All right. So the very first thing, you see the problem, start doing some research yeah. so you know what you're talking about exactly. a little bit. Next one. The next one, uh, get multiple quotes. And I think that's probably obvious. Mm -hmm. Everyone has probably heard you should always get more than one quote for any type of job, right? We it talk could about be that painting, all the time. Anything. Always get multiple quotes. And the reason that people tell you to do that is so that you can get the best price normally. I think it's really tempting to not do that once you're in the process. <laughs> because while I scheduled four quotes for myself, mm -hmm. after the first one, I was ready to be done. <laughs> you just connected with that person? I connected with the person. You know, there's a couple of reasons. I think the first one was I connected and they were really good salesmen. Mm -hmm. It was a larger company, they're a little high pressure, and I realized that kind of after I was able to sleep on this for a minute. But that's not uncommon. These people are selling a very large purchase, one of the biggest purchases you're probably going to have to make for your home over the years, and they know that speed is on their side. So they're going to try to get this deal wrapped up in that first estimate meeting. Well, they're polished. They're good at what they do, and right. that, that part of that is being a good salesperson. Totally. And getting multiple quotes helps you see, you mentioned sleeping mm -hmm. on it, which is coming up later, I think. Yeah. But just having multiple quotes helps you realize, oh, this was a little more high pressure than this one was. Right. You've just got something to one, compare it to. Right. So you've got pricing, but you've also got just a better view of the personalities that your work potentially could be working with. All of that is in your benefit. And the other thing, especially in my situation, was that it helped me understand my roof better. I actually, in that first estimate, was not told that I had original cedar shingles under my current roof. So there's no current decking. You know, normally on your roof, you have plywood or like OSB technically down. And then, you know, the sheathing that's going to protect that. It's like a synthetic material. And then you've got your shingles. I didn't have that. It turns out, which I found out in later estimates, that I have really old stuff on my roof. And all of that's going to have to get torn off. I have to completely redeck my entire roof. So I'm not just getting new shingles. I'm getting a brand new roof. Well, that's going to be nice. You're going to like that. You're going to really enjoy spending all that money. But you wouldn't have known right. that that was coming. And that, that's the thing. That's coming, period. Exactly. Whether you knew it or not. With the first estimate, it would have been a, a hidden cost that, oh, Look now there's found. an extra $5,000 to $10,000 that you've got to spend. Exactly. That makes the whole case right there for getting another estimate. Just making sure we're all talking about the same thing. So get multiple quotes. Definitely do that. What's next? Is that sleep on it? Sleep on it. Uh, on the roof. <laughs> The high, the, really the greater the pitch, the better. The roof. Right. Feel it under, you under know. your face. Yeah. You're trying to <laughs> sleep on it. No, of course it's not sleeping on the roof, right? No. Do not um, advocate that on the Repco Light Home Improvement Show. Maybe it's a, a flat roof. Unless there's roof, a flood. But no, not even that probably. No, I say sleep on it because honestly, every single time I got a quote, I was ready to just go with that quote. Mm -hmm. Well, you want it to be done. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, too, is that these things take multiple hours. I was not the quote prepared process. for that. Yeah. So I think going in, you know, here's another freebie. Expect this process to be very long. <laughs> Do it after you've eaten dinner. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to be in for a couple hour conversation. But invest the time. Take the time. Do it. Because it's important. Don't, yeah. Don't yeah. let that turn you off from the no. process. But then take time. To, sleep to really it. think that about all of these thing, things. Always growing up, she didn't make hardly any big decisions without sleeping on it. Yeah. And I don't know how many times I've employed that and I come up with a different plan after the emotions of whatever. Well, yes, exactly. This is emotional because it's stressful, right? You're talking about replacing this huge thing on your home. Mm -hmm. You're talking about spending a lot of money. They've got all of these reasons as to why their company is the best and why their process is the best. And it is kind of emotional. You get a little bit Well, and when you, you know, cried entranced. as much as I cry when they talk about the money, the my brain's been deprived of certain amounts of oxygen. <laughs> I need to replenish that before I can make a You're good You're dehydrated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like a shriveled little raisin of a man. Uh, yeah, no. So sleep on it. And that honestly, in the end, helped me save money. So 
just take the time for yourself to really process, go through all the pros and cons in your head because there's a lot of them. It's not just the best price. And I think that that is one of, you know, maybe our our inkling is to go with just the best price, right? Because it is expensive. But their warranty, their process, the customer service, who's going to be on the job site that day, all of that is worth so much money and so much peace of mind. Mm-hmm. So, Well, and a lot of the prices are, you know, they can be two to $4,000 difference, which is a lot of money. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, over the course of the lifetime of the home or the 30 years right. the singles are there. That's nothing. It's, it's not much compared to making sure you've made the right choice. Exactly. We've got time for the, the last one. What's your last one? Take time to pick the color, too. And maybe this will help slow your decision down a little bit. So this could kind of work into the sleeping on it. But they're going to show you the colors that those shingles are available in. And it's going to be a little picture in a pamphlet. Or maybe it's a tiny little real sample of the roof. But it's still going to be very small compared to this giant surface that's going to be covered. And just like when you're in the store and we tell you to sample your paint colors before choosing one, you should... Really take your time and get a large sample of whatever shingle you think you might go with and get it up on the roof. They'll get you one? Yeah, they'll get you. And if they don't, that might be a clue. (laughs) Um, Because really, that's that's half your house that you're going to see this color on. And look at it in different lighting, different situations. It's such a difference seeing something when it gets larger. And one of the the roofing companies really ran you through that. That was one of the things they focused on is making sure. So it's not just us being color people going down. And he actually used paint as an example in the conversation, not even knowing, you know, who I was or something that you can can redo. Yes. If I hate that, you know, with reasonable expense. Yeah. Very reasonable. Not going to be, you know, I don't like this green (laughs) roof. Let's just rip that all off and put something new there. So take time picking the color, at least keep that Front and center. Yes, it's an important decision. All right, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to work through in the last little bit that we've got some questions. Some questions that you need to ask. That's all just ahead. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. It's Haley's Welcome Back episode. And, of course, we're focused on Haley and all the things in Haley's life. Aren't you so glad to have me back, Dan? Talked about the baby and this and that and Jordan's, your husband's poison Poison ivy ivy. problem. And then your roof falling apart and all the estimating that you had to get done. And what we're really focused on this last half is just giving people good advice if they're going to have to jump into that, you know, that whole process, getting your roof estimated. Yeah. Last segment, we talked about a number of... Key things that you yeah, want to make sure you do. Yeah, my best advice during Haley, that estimate process. Best advice. And a couple of them that are pretty good. <laughs> and then right now what we want to focus on are the main questions that you want to ask. Yeah, while you have the estimator there in your home. These are some key questions. And there's a lot more questions that you should be asking. You know, write those down ahead of time. Have, you know, a website pulled up if you need to. But definitely do your due diligence. These are just some of them that we're going to hit on. Uh, the first one. Are they bonded and insured? That's a really important question because you do not want this to be your problem when someone falls off your roof. Right. When? <laughs> if, if. If. Let's not be that sure. fatalistic. Yeah. Right. It'll be okay. And you want to make sure you get proof because everybody's going to yeah. say yes. Right. Exactly. They're not going to so say, the, well, no, the this crazy, is not you. honest, but not very bright <laughs> person. Nope. Not a chance. But most will say yes. Make sure that you see some proof to that effect. Exactly. Uh, are you a roofer? Dan, I loves this, this question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it because it sounds ridiculous, but it's it really does. good. I didn't even think of it that way. But yes, obviously they're not a landscaper, but make sure the person giving you an estimate has been a roofer or are currently a roofer. Yeah, this is by far, I think, the best of the questions because you, first off, in your research, never saw this no. brought up by anybody. No. So it's a Haley exclusive. And (laughs) secondarily, it literally happened to you that this played into it. Yeah. uh, It turns out that the first person that gave me an estimate in the past was an accountant for the company. They decided they wanted to be an estimator. They were trained to be an estimator, but they didn't actually catch something that would have ended up costing me five to ten thousand dollars once they'd already started tearing my roof apart. So I would have gotten this estimate for twenty thousand dollars. And then in the process of them replacing my roof, I would have found out that I had to pay another five to ten thousand dollars, which is a huge yeah. difference. The the other people ha- were roofers. The yep. other estimators had been roofers, and they all caught 
this other issue yes. and brought it to your attention right away. So ask that question. Sounds silly, but I think that's a really good one. Uh, what does the process look like? Right. So how long are they going to be there for? How many people are going to be on the site? Are they themselves going to be on site the day of? Or is there a different project manager that's going to be there that you can communicate with? Yeah. And who is that person? What's the contact info? Exactly. You want to have that person right at your fingertips if questions arise. Right. Um, you know, what are they going to do to protect your home during the process? How are they cleaning up? All of those things are really good to ask. Are they going to bring a porta potty there? Do you get to use the porta potty? Should yeah. it be there? Should you want to? <laughs> All of a sudden, for this week, we've got three bathrooms at this house. <laughs> but you want to know? Yes, you want to. Some people know. might want to know. Uh, what is the warranty like? You know, obviously, warranties can vary quite a bit, and a lot of them are not going to include labor in that warranty. That's going to come from the roofer themselves, that company is going to have. decide to do Yeah, that. exactly. It's not a manufacturer's warranty that they're going to have in their brochures. That's just going to be to replace the materials if the company actually followed exactly what they're supposed to do for installation, and that could vary quite a bit. You know, if they're not using the exact nail and the exact amount of nail on each shingle, then that warranty's voided right away. So warranties, really, there's so many different rabbit holes we could chase yes. down talking about that. The big thing to take away from this is ask about it mm -hmm. and understand that just because it says 25 year, 30 year, 50 year. Yeah, what does that actually mean? Find out what that means. A lot of people base their decision on that number solely. Yep. Figure I'll be long dead by that time. Yeah. So no problems. <laughs> now just ask more questions. That's really important. Uh, what things might cause deviation from the contracted price? So they've given you this quote. Let's say they go up there and find out that you've got a bunch of OSB that's got to be replaced or there's some flashing that needs to be replaced. How much do they charge for those things? So how much could the price go up in that case? Um, next one, what are your financing options? This is a big one for me. Sure. I did not have money in my budget to replace my roof. <laughs> that was the furthest thing from my current situation. I had just had a baby. They are expensive. And this is really taking a toll on, oh, yeah. you know, our bottom line. Well, so, and some companies will actually offer financing. They'll right. help you make that connection. Other times you just have to go through the bank and figure right. it out yourself. Understand the interest rates, you know, what's out there, what's available to you. Understand how much time you have to pay this back because every company is going to be a little bit different. Last one here. Look at some reviews. Again, do your due diligence and don't... The internet's there full of reviews. Exactly. You're foolish not to take advantage of it well, and check out at... multiple sources. Yes, exactly, because their website is going to have reviews on it. But a lot of companies use review management systems, so you're only seeing the very best reviews. So they're going to look like a five-star company when maybe you look on Yelp and it turns out they're maybe a two- or three-star company. Uh, so do your research. And I would really urge people to consider who they communicate best with as well during this quote process. Uh, this is, again, a big process. It's scary. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of moving parts to this, and you've got to make sure that you can communicate with the person that's doing the work. Well, you're bringing a contractor into your home. We talk about that all the time with painting right. contractors and with any contractor. There's, there's this big process going on, and mm -hmm. you need somebody that you can communicate with. If you've got somebody who you struggle to you know, make those connections with that personal connection, but they had the best price, that still could really bite you in yeah. the long term. Yeah, if you can't talk to them. Get that person that them. you can talk to because there's going to be unforeseen things that happen. Yes. The weather's going to do this or this is going to happen. You just want to have that relationship where you can ask your questions and get your answers in a way that you understand and in a fluid manner. It's worth a lot. All right, that's all the time we've got. We're going to have to wrap it up. If you want to catch this one again, you can find it online at repcolite.com. Whatever you do today, have a great one. Make pain a part of it. And remember, the Repcolite stores are going to be closed on Monday, Labor Day. Yes. So everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. I'm Dan Hansen. I'm Haley Johnson. Thanks for listening.